so our next talk um, is going to be given in form of a video since uh, Kwang Nguyen, who is the lead author on the paper, could not get here. Um, Mira Duncheva is going to be uh, controlling the video on depth conflict reduction for stereo VR video interfaces. Thank you, Steve. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Sorry I cannot be here today. But my colleague Mira Ranshreva will help me deliver this presentation. Uh, for Q&A, uh, feel free to follow up with email. I will also be available as a beam robot outside the hall after the session. So today we will talk about uh, VR video interface for stereoscopic VR video. So 360 video has recently gained a lot of commercial and public interest. These videos are often viewed in a VR headset. You could also view them on a mobile device, but the experience of viewing them in VR is much more immersive. Thanks to recent advance in camera technology, stereoscopic 360 video is also increasingly available. Compared to its monoscopic counterpart, these videos can provide an even greater sense of immersion. So here's a little bit background on stereoscopic 360 video. These videos are often come as a pair of left and right images. When these images are rendered in VR, they are rendered slightly differently onto the left and right image and right lens of the VR headset. So when a person view these slightly different images in VR, they can experience a form of depth perception called stereopsis. And as a result, the viewer would be able to experience more depth in the scene. For example, they can tell whether an object in the video is far, near, or very close to them. These enhanced depth perception cannot be created in a monoscopic video, and so viewing stereoscopic 360 video can create a much more immersive viewing experience. As a result, there are new applications that are being developed for stereoscopic VR video, including data visualization, virtual travel, and even video editing. But the problem here is that most video interface widgets are often rendered on top of the video. On one hand, this allows a user to quickly use and uh, interact with the video interface. But on the other hand, the in these interface elements can potentially conflict with the depth cues in the video. So what is depth conflict? To understand the problem, it's important to know that in VR, interface widgets can be placed dynamically around a scene. So in some occasion, the interface may overlay an object in the video, such as the actors in, in, the, in this scene. So looking at this scene, our visual system can infer from occlusion cue that the interface is on top of the widget, uh, is on top of the actors. But as I mentioned before, in VR, the UI and the video are also rendered in stereo to convey stereopsis depth. Now, because the video content is changing, at some point, the actress may walk toward the viewer, so she may appear closer to the viewer. And by in terms of stereopsis cue, then in, in this case, the UI can appear behind the actress. So what we have here is that we have two different depth cues saying different things in the same scene. The stereopsis cue says that the UI is behind the actress, while the occlusion cue says that the UI is in front of the actress. These conflicting cues can create a scene in VR that is just physically impossible to look at. And looking at them in VR can actually lead to some form of discomfort and even double vision. Depth conflicts can also cause binocular rivalry, which is a phenomenon that happens when the left and right eyes view different images. For example, in, uh, in this example, because of depth conflict, the timestamp on the UI is overlaying different parts of the actress eye. And looking at this, it will make it really hard for the user to focus on the UI. So the bottom line here is that viewing depth conflicts between the video and the UI can lead to perceptual problems that prevent users from using video application properly. Stereoscopic technology has long been used in desktop computers to produce content. Uh, in these media, depth conflict can be detected early on and treated in production. In VR, you can place a uh, UI anywhere and the video content also changing. So depth conflicts can be very dynamic and need to be treated in real time. Commercial video applications for VR video 
don't typically handle dev conflict conflicts directly. For example, the Oculus video player render a scene as monoscopic when a UI appears. The joint VR player render a UI very close to the user view. Although doing this can uh, alleviate dev conflict. There's no guarantee that it can handle their conflicts in different video scenes and also looking at something very close to your face all the time can be quite uncomfortable. So the key insight in our work is that because dev conflict only occur when the user look at the interaction between the UI and the video content, we can reduce dev conflict by either adjusting the UI or the video content around it. To demonstrate this idea, we explore and evaluate two new approaches to reduce dev conflict. Dynamic dev adjusts the perceived dev of the UI and Halo Blur adjusts the video content around the UI. In the rest of this talk, I will briefly go over these techniques and describe a small user study that we did to evaluate them. First, at a high level idea, dynamic dev reduce dev conflict by adjusting the perceived depth of the user interface so that it appears at the same depth of the nearby video content. To do that, we need to understand the depth information from the video and we, we estimate that information by computing the disparity value of the video using optical flow. Dispar disparities are basically the pixel difference between the left and right images of the input video. For example, here the green lines are visualization of disparity values of the feature points in this video, and bigger lines basically means that the object in the video are closer to the viewer. So with disparity value, we can have a good approximation of the depth information from the video, and we can use that information. So dynamic depth can, can use that to detect when depth conflict occur. So dynamic depth detect depth conflict uh, by comparing the perceived depth of the video, which is the video and the depth of the user interface. So we compute uh, the video by selecting a set of feature points around the user, user interface, these green dots. We chose these feature points because they represent video content around the user interface, which is where depth conflict more likely to happen. And we compute the video by aggregating disparity values from these feature points. We also compute uh, the UI by from the disparity value of this uh, of the interface center point. Now, by comparing these two values, if they're different, then dynamic depth detect that there's a depth conflict, and it will go to the next depth adjustment step to resolve it. To reduce depth conflict, dynamic depth try to adjust the UI depth so that it is at the same depth of the video content. The adjustment is very subtle, but when viewed in VR, it will feel as if the UI is getting closer to the viewer. Basically, depth conflict is resolved when the UI is at the same depth of the video content. Now, a trade-off in this approach is that is how fast we can move the UI in depth. If we move the UI too quickly, it can be very distracting, but changing the UI depth too slowly and dynamic depth may not be able to prevent depth conflict in a timely manner. To address this problem, we developed some heuristic rules to regulate the rate of depth adjustment. For example, when the uh, user interface overlays some content that is very close to the viewer, depth conflict is problematic, and so we move the user in depth uh, slightly quickly. But when there is no depth conflict, or when the UI is on top of something farther away, the UI will recede in depth slowly towards a more comfortable depth distance, so that the user doesn't have to look at something close to their eyes all the time, which, which can be uncomfortable. Finally, when uh, there are uh, certain scenarios in VR when the user interface can move rapidly around the scene, for example, somebody is like turning the head around to inspect, uh, in, in these cases, the user won't likely to notice any changes on the user interface and because of change blindness. And so we leverage this opportunity to move the user interface rapidly so that we can save time without sacrificing comfort. We also explore an alternative simpler technique called Halo Blur. Halo, Halo Blur try to adjust the video content around the video the, around the user interface 
Blur effect has been known to mask high-frequency high information from the video and can potentially reduce depth conflict. For example, here you can see that thanks to the blur effect, even though the images between the left and right eye are, are still inconsistent, the users could focus more easily on the interface elements. We conducted a preliminary within subject user study to evaluate our techniques. For uh, we had 12 particip participants uh, with limited VR experience. For the baseline system, we fixed the user interface at three meters from the viewer, as recommended by the headset manufacturer guidelines. We designed two different VR video tasks to study our techniques uh, in different task conditions. For the first task, we focused on subtitle. Subtitle is a very important problem. It it can allow um, it help improve accessibility of a video interface. So for for this task, we ask participants to watch and read subtitle in the video, and to motivate that, we set the video volume to be really low at only five percent. The UI the user interface here is designed to be semi-transparent, and it follows the user's head movement. For, for the second task, we explore a more active scenario. We ask user to search for a target scene as fast and as accurate as possible. This is a target scene. Search is a common activity in many video tasks like editing, color grading, and analysis. In this task, uh, the UI is designed to be fully opaque, and the user has full control to, to change the position of the user interface around the VR controller. We ask user to fill out questionnaire about simulation sickness and also some subjective questions about uh, uh, focus, legibility, and some symptoms of depth conflicts like double vision and distraction. I will now highlight some of the key results in the study. So first for the subtitle study, we found that dynamic depth was, uh, was preferred in all questions. And, uh, but the difference the differences between uh, dynamic depth and the other two techniques were found to be statistically significant in all questions, except Q1. So for Q1, uh, we found that there were three participants who found depth conflict to be a problem, but they could come up with an ad hoc solution uh, when they try to focus. So basically, uh, whenever they need to focus, change their focus from the video to the subtitle, they try to find a region in the video that is farther away such as the ceiling or the, the floor, so that uh, they could change their focus more easily. And that may explain why the rating for baseline and halo blur were higher in this case. For the video search task, we found an interesting result in that there were only small differences in the questionnaire, task time, and uh, task error. And none of the differences were found to be statistically significant. So. So why is there a difference between the subtitle and the search task? In the questionnaire, participants revealed that they did not notice any problem with the search task, and that may be because of two reasons. First, in the search task, the UI was designed to be fully opaque, so compared to subtitle, they have conflict in the search task could only occur around the edge of the user interface, not inside it. And second, the search task demand participants to rapidly change attention between the video and the interface so that they can compare the target scene and find the target. So uh, participants might have not paid too attention on the user interface long enough to notice any depth conflicts problem. Overall, these results show that depth conflicts might depend on the task characteristic and the UI design. When the task, uh, when the UI is semi-transparent and require user to pay a lot of attention on the interface, such as when reading subtitles. Depth conflict is a problem, and here dynamic depth is a promising solution. On the other hand, if the UI is fully opaque, or when the task uh, the require user to quickly change attention between uh, the user interface and other elements, then depth conflict might not be a problem. But a limitation in, in the, our current study is that the task time is quite short, it's only two minutes. So there might be long-term effect of depth conflict, even for the search task that we could not study in this design, and I will leave that for future work. And finally, Halo Blur did not work as we expected. We included Halo Blur because of positive feedback from pilot testing and because of previous studies. 
And but we still think this is a useful result for future researchers and designers who want to design for a stereoscopic VR video because because they can avoid trying this approach. And that concludes my talk. Thanks everyone for listening. All right. Um, thank you all. I, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to pop this up for a minute here. And then if you have questions, we have two methods. One of them is I'm going to try to get um, Kwong on Blue Jeans live right now to answer your questions. And then the other one is going to be he is outside in a robot. I can see him from here. Um, so you can also ask him questions there. So Kwong, I am uh, in the Blue Jeans. Let's see if he's there. Do you guys have any questions? And of course, I can do my best to answer the questions too. Um, I'm not, I was not one of the collaborators on this paper, so I, I'm limited in my knowledge. Okay, I'm going to assume you guys just want to go talk to the robot. This is why you don't have questions for me. Steve. So I have one question, maybe you can repeat so I don't mind. Yes, please. That's a good question. Um, I have a cheat sheet of FAQ questions, and I'll be honest with you, that was not one of my questions, but I'm going to just speculate here. I, I think that, yes, it's possible. I think it, oh, ah, sorry, thank you. The question is, in addition to moving things in Z, did you consider moving things in X and Y? Because that way, if you have uh, video objects that are moving closer to you, maybe you don't have to worry so much about moving it in front of them if you could just move it to the side. And I think, um, the, I think I don't know, uh, I think Kwong would probably have the best answer, but I, I guess that, uh, yes, in some situations you can definitely move things in X and Y and that will resolve this, this depth issue, uh, but, but it's not always possible when you have um, perhaps lots of motion or lots of things moving forward. So thank you for that question. And please, Kwong is in the back, um, happy to answer your questions. Oh, there he is too. Kwong, do you want to talk? Say anything? Uh, hi. <laughs> Great. Hey, guys. Uh, I, I missed the question, sorry. Well, no worries. I think I answered it, which was all about, can you move things in X and Y in addition to moving things in Z? OK, that's great. Thanks. Um, my yeah. Yeah, I think you can move. Uh, yeah, the, 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 you can move things in X and Y. and. Um, uh, I guess like it would take a little bit uh, longer to 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 give you like a longer answer. So I'm happy to chat uh, with the robot outside. Okay. Any other questions? It looks like Wi-Fi is working well enough for some live Q and A. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Juan. Thanks, everybody.